few lines will complete my Durban diary. At present, we're flying over the city. I can see the hotel where I stayed, and yes, even the balcony of my bedroom overlooking the sea, the warm Indian Ocean where I had my first bathe. But only two weeks ago, it seems almost impossible. So much has happened since that Sunday morning. I remember it was one of those sparkling, sunshiny days that belonged to Durban in July. I was relaxing on a balcony overlooking the South Beach. My table was the only one with any chairs to spare. But that didn't last long, because the next thing I knew there was a young man asking whether he and his party could share it with me. I don't know when I've met a friendlier crowd of people. John, oh yes, by the way, his name was John, told me that the Hawaiian type of surfboard had only just become popular in South Africa. But there was nothing beginnerish about the way some of those young men used them. afternoon 
watching them. But, well, we decided to go for a drive. And our little car behaved wonderfully on those long, smooth tarmac roads. It's amazing how they build hundreds and hundreds of miles of roads like this for comparatively so few people. to do in Durban in July. So, of course, I went. I remember the grey horse I liked. Number 13, he was. Normally, I'm awfully superstitious, but somehow I had a feeling in my bones about this one. Of course, my escort thought I was crazy, but he gave me one of those patronising smiles that men always switch on when they're humouring you, and he let me back my hunch. We left the paddock and went over to the main stand. The Durban July is always one of the top fashion shows in the Union, and you could see that many of the women were aiming straight for the social column. binoculars seem to be regarded as an exclusively male adornment. I was just dying to see whether my grey horse had broken his leg on the way to the starting post, but of course I had to put up with reading his family tree in the race card. But like most women, I got my way in the end. As the horses came into the straight, there was my number 13, going like mad, bless him, right up there with the leaders. one of those evenings when you just feel good all over. And I expect number 13 had a lot to do with it too. But whatever it was, I was definitely in the mood for dancing. July 
July, I went to watch the great Zulu religious gathering, which is held every year under the leadership of Shembe. They call it the Shembe Festival, and it must be the greatest gathering of Zulus that you could find anywhere these days. Almost everyone was dressed in full tribal costume, and it really was a thrilling sight. In fact, I think that for sheer color and excitement, this was the highlight of my Natal holiday.
best chapter of all. I'm writing this by a frozen mountain stream, far above the warm and sunny coast round Durban. It's hard to believe that people are still sunbathing down there, or that those glorious flowers are still blooming away merrily in the gardens of the mountain hostel that we left only this morning. I couldn't have asked for a bigger contrast, or for a more exciting climax to my holiday in Natal. A party of us have come up into the heart of the Drakensberg to climb the highest peak in South Africa. It's called Montesaurus, and it's over 11,000 feet high. Imagine me climbing a monster mountain like that, and in midwinter too. But everyone told me that it wasn't nearly as terrifying as it sounded. And as there were plenty of people around to haul me up the difficult bits, I decided that I might as well try. The most wonderful thing about this Drakensberg country is the air. I just can't describe how utterly alive it makes you feel, or what it did to our appetites that day. gives, I went out again to the edge of the mountain. 
the great curtains of mist were being blown aside. And here on the rooftop of Natal, I was given a glimpse of the vast spirit which is Africa. How many times shall I return to my diary and dream?